The most difficult part of the workout is the pre-workout. That very beginning, those first steps that we have to take, and there's a reason for that. You see, the heart is regulated by two opposing nervous systems. You got the parasympathetic, you got the sympathetic nervous system. And those two, those two nerves, they innervate the heart, but, but if we were to cut those nerves, if we, were, from the, if we were to cut them from the heart, our heart would be beating at about 110 beats per minute. The parasympathetic nervous system, however, it's always working, it's always on, tapping its brakes on the heart, telling the heart to chill out, to calm down. And that's why the beginning of the workout is, is so difficult because we're in a constant parasympathetic state. It tells the heart to slow down and stay steady from the 110 that I said earlier to the slower 70 to 80 beats per minute that we should be at. And it's a psychological bitch of change gears from one of relaxation to one of stimulation. And there's a lot of chemistry that has to take place for these gears to change. But when they do, you, well, you get to enjoy the workout. So here's what goes on. You begin exercising. You feel completely unmotivated, but, but you do so anyways. Now this is gonna lead to a cascade of events. The first thing that's just gonna happen is your body's gonna notice a rise in blood pressure by baroreceptors in the carotid artery and in the aorta. Now these baroreceptors are gonna notice a change immediately and within the second that you start workout, your body changes and, and it notices a change in pressure, you release norepinephrine. Now norepinephrine is the beginning of the entire cascade. It leads to a lot of different events, including motivation and change in mindset from that of calm to that of, of can do and of motivation. Norepinephrine tells the parasympathetic nervous system to chill down because, well, we gotta get ready to go to war. Norepinephrine tells the parasympathetic nervous system to stop putting the brakes on the heart. So now the heart is free to begin its own gas kicking. Your pulse increases, your vessels constrict, and you're at a more alert state. Your focus, you no longer want your cocoa in your blankie. You go in from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde as you become mission ready. However, while norepinephrine causes vasoconstriction, the complete opposite happens in your, in your working muscle because just the sheer stress of skeletal muscle contraction, that triggers the release of nitric oxide. Now, you've probably heard of nitric oxide tablets as, as their pre-workout supplements, and, and I've tried them with some modest results. Nitric oxide release, it leads to vasodilation of the contracting muscles. And so now that blood flow, that blood flow is free to enter the, the, the muscles, providing it with further nutrients, more oxygen, overall blood flow. So, so now they go to the muscle and you get the pump. And that's just only in zone one. But as you continue to work out, you reach zone two, 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. Some norepinephrine now further process into epinephrine, but, but to avoid any confusion, I'm gonna call it adrenaline. Norepinephrine is still there, but, but now some of it is turned into adrenaline. Now you're really exercising. Adrenaline, I mean, it pushes your heart, to, your heart rate to continue to rise into 120s, 130s and higher while increasing contractility of the heart. So now adrenaline not only makes your heart pump faster and faster, but also stronger. It causes our breathing to get deeper and faster because well now we need more oxygen. It leads to energy production and, and further increases our focus. Norepinephrine is for, for alertness. Adrenaline is there for motivation. Not only that, but the fun part begins because the endorphins, they're recruited during this cascade of events and their purpose is to increase our pain tolerance and, and make us feel We'll feel good about exercising. Thing of it is that it's our body's way of motivating you to keep it up. We feel euphoric and we begin enjoying the workout. So, so even though we're tired, we feel fucking great. We're literally getting high on our natural supply. All of that, it's just so too. So if you were to start this workout at right at the beginning of the video, you'd be right about where I'm discussing the physiologic response of this workout. The change in your brain chemistry and body, it happens that quick that fast and, and it's the body has to switch on the speed of a dime. Serotonin is, is increased and that leads to improved sense of well-being. Regular exercise has been shown to increase serotonin production and this contributes to lower anxiety, better sleep and, and reduced depression. Now we get to zone three and four of the workout or 70 to 90 percent of our maximum heart rate. You should time it. I've, I haven't, yeah, it's in about my eighth minute mark. From this time forward until, until I fatigue, the adrenaline now is con in control. Endorphins, they make us feel good about the workout, making us further motivated, but you begin to release an often overlooked molecule called anandamide. Anandamide attaches to, of all things, cannabinoid receptors in the brain, and thereby it mimics THC. It causes further euphoria. Now you're, you're really glad that you came to work out and you feel exhilarated because you can do this. Dopamine now begins to show its presence, causing further focus and, and motivation. 
So you begin with norepinephrine causing you to feel alert, nitric oxide causing you to feel, feel the pump, adrenaline causing further motivation and sharpness, endorphin masking the pain and, and you feel good. While you're doing that, anandamide comes in and gives a stamp of approval. So you feel that strange combination of relaxed and excited as you continue your ass kicking it all while loving it. And you're really glad you came. As you enter zone four, you get a surge in cortisol. While adrenaline causes the breakdown of fat into, uh, into energy, cortisol changes the metabolism because your body begins to break down glycogen into glucose because, well, you need the energy like, like immediately. So your sugar needs to be regulated and it becomes a priority. You break down glucose in the form of energy and, and you get rid of it, not through perspiration, but through ventilation because carbon dioxide, that's its waste product of glucose. So you need to breathe and you breathe out faster and faster and faster and faster because, well, you need to get rid of the caloric intake that you just burned. Now you're at zone five and 90 to 100 percent of your maximum heart rate. You're now really fatigued, but, but you got the high going. So you're motivated. So you continue. You keep it up until you, until you have to force yourself to stop. The long term benefits of exercise leads to BDNF increases. That's brain derived neurotropic factor. And that leads to improved cognitive function. You begin to sleep better. You think better. You, you maintain a stable mood. It's the good stuff. It's the 100% pure brain food. All that happens just by raising your heart rate. When people work out for, for the weight loss, that's draining to me. That's work. And, and it's boring as fuck. They stay at a pulse between two to three, the, time, the zone two or three, saying to themselves how much they hate to work out. And their mind wanders the entire time and of other things that they could be doing. But when you're deep, deep in zone four of your workout, you're too focused. I see people reading a book, a fucking book while working out. Your ass should be so focused on the task at hand when you exercise that you can't be reading. You have to say to yourself, I'm going all balls here and I'm doing this because I'm here to push myself. I push myself so hard and now I'm loving it. I'm here to change myself and to turn into a beast, to change my paradigm and begin workouts for other reasons than just, than just the looks. So do it for the mental benefits and do it for the brains, not the bronze. Gentlemen, I hope that this video motivated you enough to get moving. This isn't about the gym, it's bigger than that. This is mental warfare. Every set, every elevated heartbeat is pulling you out of the past and rebuilding that new you, quite literally. That adrenaline, that's your confidence. The dopamine, that's motivation kicking in. And that nitric oxide, well, that's your pump. When you feel your mood changing, that's the chemistry of exercise, reminding you that it's working and that you're still alive. But you don't have to do this alone. You need a coach, a guide, someone to push you through this and to motivate you. And I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't feel that I was the best. So set up a one-on-one -on -one today, not tomorrow, not next week, but today, because we're talking about your life here. The link is in the comment section underneath. Thank you very much.